Welcome back to the middle part. What would you like to do with this horn? I have an important question about this room. Very well. Does it have any exits? It has the exit you came in through. There are okay. no other exits. So do we have to go through all the puzzles again to get out? Your, uh, the barbarian puzzle completely disappeared when you solved it. And you saw behind you the previous puzzles you had already solved. Okay, so we can just make our way back through the through the, the tunnel. So such. it would seem. Right. Is there anything in here we want to take back, or are we just leaving everything? Well, the the book is of interest to me. Um, I'm going to cast identify on the horn. You have identify. I took my first level into cleric. Do you have a holy symbol of your god? Um. I would be willing to argue that I am a holy symbol to my god, as I am no. I am a direct Negative. descendant. <laughs> Negative. I will let you cast this first spell and discover your okay. connection, but any future spells will require you to first sleep, and then, as usual for clerics, <laughs> pray for spell access. But yes, okay. this first time you want to know what the horn is you lord of the rings reach out to touch it and we get it from the horn's perspective as your hand gets closer and then i take the third level of exhaustion you touch the horn your identify spell flows through your body and out into the horn and you hear the sound of drums time freezes for you the drums continue you are before seven gods you cannot see their faces and their words are unpronounceable to you they speak the true dwarven language the true divine language perhaps if you were a 20th level cleric you could communicate with them but not a first level apprentice instead more spirits of your family come forward and interpret and translate for you and you hear one particularly unusual jester one roll forward and say, Ho ho! You hold a horn of particular interest! You'll find that this horn is the horn of the King of Heroes, a cursed item! If you attune to this with a short rest, you may find yourself able to call upon 89 previous heroes, all of them previous wielders, who all called upon the horn's power, except, of course, the first one. You know, he, he made the horn and tied himself to it so that he would be eternally able to serve as commander of a legion of heroes. Once in your lifetime, you may blow the horn and call upon them, uh, but then you'll be forced to serve in that particular army for all of the horn's existence. You snap back. You're back. Time resumes. The drums end. You're kneeling, grabbing the horn. You see just a little piece of it has been broken off on the floor, chipped. Okay. The, but the piece is there? It okay. is there. <laughs> okay. Yep. It, it right. appears to have been broken on this very floor. All right. I'll, uh, I'll pick up the horn in the, um, I'll pick up the horn in the, the, the chipped piece. See if I can find some way to repair it later down the road. Mending will not help you because it's a magic item. You will need a yes. much more serious magical effort. Should we take this book with us? Well, let's see what it's about first. It is okay. pretty big. Okay. The book is encoded in a language that none of you can read because it was personally written by someone in a encryption. Can I comprehend languages to yes. see if it makes sense? Absolutely. Okay. And that is what I shall do. I All shall right. prepare. I have not finished writing down everything that is in this book. Okay. If you want to know everything that's in it, you will have to wait for me to that's finish fine. those notes. That said, if you would like a cliff notes, if you want to flip to the first page, if you want to flip to the last page, if you want to look for particularly interesting notes, let me know where you want to go. Just read like the inside cover summary. 
Like the, yeah. you know, <laughs> the, 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 the dust cover. There yeah, is no a, dust jacket. No. It was a dead uh, uh, too. <laughs> but uh, when... I, I want to start with the first page just the to find out page. who wrote this and what it's about. I often find that my thoughts wander, so I will put them here. When I was younger, I kept a journal but did not write in it often. But now, in my middle age, it seems that I write verbosely. Now that this keep is mine, I think I must leave a log for the future. Know then that you read the direct hand of Locke Blazewing. Oh, Locke Blazewing's book. Okay. Maybe I maybe I should start a book then. Maybe you should grab it since we're all uh, it, grabbing the book out. It's five feet tall. It weighs more than Kithrix does. I think the book can stay here for now. Um... We know where it is. It's not going anywhere. It's pretty big, pretty heavy. Um, I've just, I flip a couple pages and then I just look at the next, and I just grab a random, just just to get an idea of what it's about. Roll a 1d100. Oh, sure. Sounds promising already. 62. Okay. <clears throat> you get somewhere slightly after the middle of the book. And here you see uh, so that so each of the pages appears to cover a year as you're mm. flipping through it. And uh, you let me get a year for you. You get the year 385. Uh, 385. Okay. Far too often, I find myself wondering about her words. Was it her limited humanity that kept us together during the hardest of our trials? Her insistence that we do strange and somewhat frivolous things that I always thought I would have time for later? The more I think back on our journey together, the more I think that she knew this would happen. And in the wake that she has left, there is a void. Ah. Uh, this has to be about Mistress Galavanti. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you turn to the very end you, of the book. Sorry, which way are you turning it? To the end of the book. So it it goes on for several more pages. Mm -hmm. The last page is marked 428 NDC. The year after he died. Mm -hmm. The hand scrawled there is unusual. It is not the same steady hand that you've seen earlier or at the beginning of the book. And it says, I must use the last of the power here. I know I, I, that I can go to where she is. Her service is as eternal as my love. And I will bargain with her patron. You said it was 3 385 was the last page? No, 385 was somewhere towards no, no, the, 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 pre, the previous, the yes. previous one we read, I mentioned. Yep, okay. 385. So Galavanti was already dead five years in 385. Yes. So it was uh, Dame Retortia that may have written it because based on what we know from the graveyard, uh, Locke Blazewing passed in 427. Yes, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And she was the last to die. Yeah, so it must be she may have left on an adventure to make some sort of bargain. Maybe that's what the portal's there for. And can we somehow a, pat a patron, maybe a an, uh, an elemental or or otherworldly, a planar patron? 
possible, but I wonder if the power from that portal can be taken back and put into the keep. That I do not know. I don't even know right. where the power comes from yet. You recall yep. that the portal was unpowered. It had mm. runes on it uh, that led it to the plane of negative energy, but that it mm. had no current power. Okay. Uh, I have a request of everybody. Can we keep this room and its contents secret for now? Just limited to just us? Absolutely. Yes. I definitely didn't plan on telling anybody about anything down here. Does anyone have proficiency in a forgery kit? Proficiency in, in what? Sorry? Forgery kit. Forgery. forgery. I do not have a forgery kit. The I would like is you not... to make a, a investigation check at disadvantage, Gwineria. Okay. You have got uh, inspiration. It's the same. Not saying it's the same. Can I use it and just cancel that out? Yeah. Okay. I will do that. I will roll the regular investigation check. Just saying. 18, 22. Let's go. Finally, good roll. You're right. Something does not add up here. This hand that has <laughs> mm -hmm. written the final message is weak with age, infirmity, frailty, mm. but it is not Dame Retortia's handwriting. Oh. It is simply an aged lock blaze wing. Um, I mean, so this, the, the illusion that we saw here, was that of Locke Baiswing? I mean, we've seen pictures of him. Above, you have seen so. many. You've seen him at least three times now, twice in the throne room and once here. Mm -hmm. He definitely did not appear elder and aged and frail, as this handwriting might suggest. This is a good mystery. I have theories, but there are only theories. Hmm. Still kind of wondering who the frail lady was in that one room we went into, or the frail person in the wheelchair. We can insight check. For the folks at insight. home, you should know mm -hmm. that insight or a straight wisdom is called out in the player's handbook as a skill players can roll when they need an answer from their DM on something that the DM wants to give, but feels still needs a roll. A message from God, essentially. And plus, Bearded loves rolling things. There's no <laughs> God here today. There's no God here. You, yeah. had to. <laughs> you absolutely <laughs> believe that that woman in the wheelchair was a member of uh, Locke Blazewing's adventuring party. You just don't know who. Gotcha. I know all of them were. I just don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. Kind of play with the I stuff wanna, on the I want to be clear here. All of you literally just saw your boy cast magic, by the way. <laughs> I applaud. That is amazing. I feel like not enough was made of the fact that he's a cleric. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we always knew that he had connection. We're deep under the ground, and that's oh, okay, his, yeah. his domain. Wow. Just what an incredible <laughs> dwarven racist statement. Because he's under the ground, he can use magic now. Yes. What is he, a sword? He's drawing the power yes. of the earth. Listen, just, like can... if I, just like if I were touching a tree, then I should be able to do some magical up stuff. Yes. I know you know that that's not true. And what about me? <laughs> you have to be holding a piece of finished wood, and you can beat Apparently. someone to death with it. That's pretty yeah. magical. Yeah. The man the man summons ghosts. I'm not, I'm not surprised he can do magic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be right back. Sorry, let's get my lunch. Yep. Yeah. Um, if there's nothing else that we're going to be looking at, I would very much like to get out of this debuff hellhole. I would like to go and rest, meditate, Wait. commune. <clears throat> sure. You guys want to go take a long rest? Yes. Yes. yes absolutely. If we can would get you out like of here. to attune to the horn? Absolutely not. Okay. But you are adding it to your items on your character um, sheet, correct? That was baited. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure this... somehow sacrifice the think, power of the horn to power up? Put it, put it in kitchen. Would you, <laughs> would you like to do that? 
I'm actually, uh, I think what I want to do is, um, I think I want to like put it on like the, the mantle place where, uh, like put it on a mantle place somewhere, just somewhere where like in our, in our armory. I will absolutely allow you to sacrifice the horn, release all of its magical energy into the keep to get it working. Oh, yeah. It will require an arcana check for a ritual. <laughs> of course it will. Do it. Um, Could do. You want to use magic? You have yeah. to use the skill about magic. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, See, cleric man. <laughs> the, here's, here's my thought process on this. Okay. Is um when ap initially said the horn was chipped i was assuming that he was implying that they were using magic from the items to fuel the keep mm -hmm. and i was prepared to sacrifice my axe to to power our castle back up yeah. um but after hearing about the like after identifying it yeah. i'm thinking that this could be like um if if something happens and we get like somehow condemned or whatever or or our like our souls like yeah our souls become like uh oh god i can't think of the word but like it, unsure like where we're going to end up in the afterlife well then the the horn is a way to cheat that just to be clear you would know as someone who just used the identify spell you still go to the afterlife of wherever your deities put you. You're just pulled back out again to serve the horn every time it's blown. Okay. If that would you... suck getting pulled out of the afterlife all the time just to fight someone else's battle. <laughs> every single person chose to, to blow that horn. No one made them. They needed its power so much that they willingly consigned their soul to an eternity of crusading. Imagine so gonna, getting pulled gonna, out of your timeline to fight. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that up to the group. We can James, because I know you just came back. We can either keep the uh, ghost army horn or we can sacrifice the horn, do an arcana check and a ritual, and use the horn to power the keep. But it'll Get destroy rid of the it. horn in the process. But, but what what happened to the spirits of those that are that are bound to the horn if we do that? They're no longer bound to the horn. Because there is no horn. Yeah. Like AP said, they're they're currently residing in their own like afterworld. Okay. Afterlife, as as but... long as we're not consuming them to, to power the keep. No. Yeah. Imagine consuming a soul to power the keep. That is correct. I will confirm that you will not be consigning their souls to eternally powering the keep. You're simply okay. releasing the magic that the king of heroes placed upon the horn. Okay. Was that, that what the, like a, the party was? Double win. Yes. All right. Okay, and, I assume um, you're going to rest first so that you yes. no longer have... Yes. Absolutely. Well, great two days. news, you have to rest twice. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> yes. We will spend a few days resting and telling stories. And Fine by me. Okay. Enjoy. Godric is so spend... tired, he's going to let other people do the cooking. It has been three days since you have taken the keep, and already paperwork is beginning to pile up. <clears throat> uh... The forests grow thicker. The elves report this immediately. Uh, many birds and rodents begin covering the land in a darkness of wings and disease. But not like, you know, uh, maybe I'm overstating about the rodents. <laughs> There's a lot of rats now, and they eat a lot of stuff. But then the rats get big and fat. And uh, again, it's only been two days, but already people are starting to see some pretty fat rats out there. Um Rodents of unusual size. So you know, spent a thousand gold buying cats for the keep. Here are <laughs> here are some concerns your people bring to you. One, there is no one running logistics. So pretty much each group is independently gathering their own set of food. Two, the roads in the cardinal directions that kind of let you get here are starting to disappear as the forest grows. Three even if the outer keep walls are finished, which I think you paid part of the money to restore them, but not all, they're still basically worthless. They're only like six feet tall and like one brick wide. How many? You're... How much gold do we have left to fix it? That did we need to fix it? So we put two thousand towards the cost of five thousand. 
Okay, and I can put another thousand from what I found in the dungeon. So okay. we're still two thousand. Two thousand short. short. In the process of restoring it, it's it won't cost more money. It's just that the dwarves want permission to essentially modernize the wall. Your lead quarry man basically just assumed that this place was defended by dragons and that the wall was mostly symbolic as a way of saying, ah, yes, there's a wall here, but if you cross it, the dragons will fly down and eat you. Um, you also receive rumors that some people have seen a green dragon cavorting in the woods at the edge of their vision. Cavorting. Mm-hmm. Don't like that. Do they have any like... specifics about it? It's just been so spotted gonna... by almost three dozen elves. I feel like I we really... should tell people this is the part of the magic of the keep, the, the dragon keep. Mm-hmm. So they don't, they don't get, because it's probably the spirit of the dragon. Okay. Did you, mm-hmm. let me circle back as well. Did you want to authorize reinforcing the walls to keep which again will not in any way increase the cost it will just no longer be the authentic original exterior you won't be able to be like yes it's a, it's it's a historic monument place nothing has changed Upgrade. It's, a, it's, it's, it's the ship of theseus all right yeah i'm i'm for modernizing right, walls, but, uh, yes. i feel like that's that's more of a group decision. for modernizing everything except yes. for that front door yeah the one with the yeah. dragons in the stained glass with under the moon. Okay. Kind of keep Sorry. some of the old the old touches in there. Um, I want to get a the dwarves together and organize them into teams to maintain the roads or begin maintaining the roads. Okay. Um, and then ask uh, Guinira if she can speak with the elves to begin sustainably like hunting in the forest around us yes i think that what i'm gonna ask the elves to do is because the dwarves will be busy with the roads the elves will share the food so that they can you know look after game you know smoke it preserve it share it out and that's the beginning of some logistics and i appoint one elf to be the liaison to the dwarves and to oversee this I will take with the with the dwarves to the elves when the point one is a liaison. I will take persuasion checks from either of you, and you can substitute int for charisma if you would like. Well, I I can try persuasion check. My passive is sixteen. And I get a plus six on the roll. So, uh... um, is this before or after we've slept off the uh, exhaustion? After. 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 Okay. Let me just go ahead and do that before I roll. I want to get some uh, some letters sent out to get some um, provisions actually, that we might need. I'm going to use my inspiration on this, so I'll go ahead and just roll oh. with advantage. Okay. Okay. Yeah. A nine. For the folks at home, that's a nine. Yep. The dwarves are not deeply motivated by your words. They will do what you say, but... There will be no gusto. Oh my god. Oh, the elves are not happy. Uh, no one's happy about this. It is simply a miscommunication. Oh. Uh, rather than one elf talks to the dwarves and, and the elves gather food for the dwarves, what happens is they rotate who communicates with the dwarves every day. And so mm-hmm. there's just a lot of miscommunication and like, Every day, a new person has to establish the protocols. <laughs> Everyone's just doing the... They're redoing say, the think, same work over and over again. I, I want to say, I think it's not that we gave bad directions. It's that we chose the wrong people to be liaisons. Yeah, it's, yeah. You're, 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 you've been misinterpreted by your people. Mm-hmm. Oh. From a logistics point of view, given that we plan to continue an adventuring lifestyle, should we look? At, should we be looking at hiring like a castman or something to run the sort of day to day? Yes, I would Absolutely. definitely put money into that. So, and then that person could do the communicating. <laughs> I want to give you guys a choice to either start the ritual to imbue the keep with the magic of the horn, or you can start plotting your next moves on the overworld. As you've just mentioned, you want to keep adventuring and perhaps hire some staff. 
you know, I, th- I think we need a trip to like a major city to actually go and find expert people to do some of these things. Yeah. I also want to send some letters out to get some magical items yes, for us. Yes, I knew that you wanted to do that, and Neo Buzzard wanted Godric to also get a new item as well. Yeah, I that? can. Well, yeah, well, he's doing well. Him and Guineer are doing that. I can kind of take over for that for him. Well, the the half plate might change some of my plates because uh, instead of I was going to say I was going to sell the First, half plate. We need to talk I... about you getting a holy symbol and your spiritual <laughs> journey as a new cleric of the forge. <laughs> Let's okay. let's start there, okay? Mm. Let's let's not put the cart before the horse. How do you go about acquiring a holy symbol of the god of the forge? Um I think Godric the the first night of like actual rest he gets, um he has his like kit all like disassembled and he's just as he's just absolutely exhausted, he's sitting like on the floor next to his bed and he does something he hasn't done in a long time, which is pray. And he just asks for, for guidance. Um, and he's thinking about the words of his ancestor telling him like, uh, to forge something, to make something and to lead like a, a happy life. And that's the best way to honor his ancestors. And so I think he's, he's doing that while like actually praying, um, and I don't think he's reciting a prayer. I think he's just like asking, asking whatever deity um, will help him create to to give him some guidance. You aren't sure whether your prayer is being answered and you're being given a divine vision, or if you've just fallen asleep in the middle of praying. But you find yourself on a. Uh, floating piece of rock adrift in a sea of magma in every direction and a enormous stone face that stretches the the night sky wide of a dwarf its mouth opens and you can't understand the language coming out of it you are blown back by the force of this divine power but you see visions as it speaks visions within this vision that you leading dwarves forward you mining using a pick crafted by both your father and your wife you at the head of dwarves reading from a tome that you have crafted with your own hands the pages are not paper but steel plates with metal etched into them so that each part will be left for eternity never to fade that the words will always be known And you are not quite sure what they're trying to tell you. But when you awaken the next morning, you find pressed into your hand a simple steel circle the size of your palm. Interesting. Um, I think Godric sees it as his because this is like the forge domain and it's a god of the forge i think he sees it as uh a test he has to forge his own holy symbol out of the steel yes amore yes i see you i hear you so i think that's uh i think with whatever remaining downtime we have i'm going to be working with the um the dwarves in, in the camp to forge something out of this do you have proficiency in blacksmith tools I do. Okay, then this will be a much less risky roll for you. <laughs> Go ahead and make that no, roll. I don't think I have blacksmith tools, but I have proficiency in it. I don't and think they, any of our rolls have not brought, been risky. You'll recall they brought tools with them. Yes. Uh, um, as um, tribute to... Uh, where do I find my proficiencies at? Actually yeah, like to you, work with you, the have, you do have the proficiency. Carpentry. Too. You need to roll proficiency proficiency with dexterity. So it'll be your proficiency with minus one. I am a dwarf and I'm digging a hole. In a hole. (laughs) Diggy, diggy hole. I was wearing some stuff just the other day. We just got a copyright claim. I literally played that the entire (laughs) (laughs) workout. 
I played it the entire day of, at work when, when you guys posted that. Um, Thankfully, I work by myself. I, I, I can't find it, so I'm just going to roll it. Just, yeah, just roll D20. What's your current proficiency? Oh, 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 <laughs> it'll, it'll, be, it'll be plus two total because we're plus three, so minus okay, one deck. So it's so. a 15. Yeah. What do you what do you want this to be? You can forge the steel ring into something. Uh, several ounces of steel would be. I think. Um, I think I'm going to make it a like a pendant that I'll wear around his neck. Okay. Um, I think it's it's going to be a. Um, if you're holding it right side up. It'll look like uh like the dwarf face that I saw in my my fever dream, but if you flip it upside down, it'll it'll be reminiscent of like a, a hammer. I think like a wow, like the, mind bending. All right. Yeah. Okay. What's next? The ritual for the keep, or discussing your future and prospects? Can I, I think ask one quick question as well. We know the name of the green dragon we killed, don't we? Yeah. Uh yes. Wait. Okay. Leave you do. I maybe you don't. Did you write it down somewhere? I feel like I didn't share it with you. I think you didn't. You didn't share that one with us. You shared the Orthalax with us last time. I I feel like I told you Orthalax's name, but your characters don't know anything about orthalax that's well, a we, 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 we were gave the name give the name orthalax by the um by the ah, half yeah, dragon okay, before, I'll, buy yeah. that. Yes. I'll buy that yeah. i don't think you ever learn the green dragon's name yeah i don't think so either okay so um i do want to possibly probably with sparky self as well then given that we've released the green dragon spirit into the woods around here i wanted to add another memorial in the graveyard for the green dragon even, even without a name just to simply acknowledge that her essence is part of these lands now okay that's nice i would like i mean what what kind of memorial are we looking at you know the ones that are already there are massive tablets carved from stone that clearly took quite a bit of time to make yeah, uh, so I, I'm thinking more like a can. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, like I, I don't have the ability to produce that right now, but I, I think it has to, it can't go un, unseen. The dwarves will definitely help with whatever leftover stone they have, making it into, uh, you know, rounded stones to stack into a cairn. How far is the closest major town from here? So the kingdom of Zanavir is maybe 200 miles north. At the kind of rate of travel that you all are capable of, it's slightly less than a week and a half away. You, I will need a uh, like a history check to see if you know anything about the Southlands. Quinaria, what do you know about the Southlands? <laughs> I help. <laughs> Uh, a little bit, 15 worth of knowledge about the Southlands. Okay, so the Southlands are not terribly well understood by the people in the north here. Uh, most contact is through, like, either very limited, very lucrative trading of luxury goods. So seasonings, spicings, and dyes from the south are traded for northern uh, precious metals. Uh, you'd normally think gold, but actually they're crazy for silver down there. And in particular, they appear to have no local sources of like orichalcum, adamantium, or mithril. So they go at like incredible rates on southern Ooh. trades. That said, the dyes are exceedingly expensive. Um, you know, purples, deep blues, golds do not naturally occur in the north. So... You know, people who are seen wearing such colors indicate their wealth to trade with the Southerners. Um, the northernmost of the Southlands uh, are a series of goblin kingdoms that are united underneath the Hobgoblin banner. But the northern northernmost of those is a uh, a Nolish um, 
not not exactly a kingdom, but like a collection of tribes that move about. They are barbarian rovers uh, that act as like a shield. They take tribute from those who pass through their lands, uh, but they do like come together to form large cities for a very short amount of time, like a month or so before breaking apart, gathering materials, gathering stories, doing things, and then coming back together again. Uh, if you're looking for a permanent major city, you'd have to travel to uh, the Hobgoblin lands, which are about 15 days. Uh, a cr and part of it will be crossing a desert. Prime and that's spot. considered the first... It's like the major trade city <clears throat> that leads north. Oh, I don't like that. You get sand in your boots? Oh. Sand, it just gets boots. everywhere. Yeah, yes. of course. It's dry. <laughs> okay. We're just... We're really doing this. All right. Um, so what do we think? Do we want to head to a city? Try and find some additional help for this place? I mean, we've got things, some things to sell. We can maybe try and do some hired work to earn some more money in order to pay for this place. <clears throat> it's oh, not a we can... bad idea. I just don't want to leave now that, you know, not everybody's speaking together very well right now. So I don't want to like leave it and then come back and it's all kind of mm -hmm. ass up. Right. Um... We could take a few days first to try and sort out these communication I issues, so. I guess. Mm -hmm. I yes. Mind. We have to decide how we power things up and yeah. Probably get with the elves to kind of go over logistics of how the interior is going to lay out. We'll probably go to the elves and the doors actually. So they're going to be working together. How long should the ritual take? Do we know? Like for the horn? Uh, six hours. Okay. But we can do that while we're here. Yeah. We could just take a day for the horn and, you know, a day for the logistics and rest the rest of it. Sure. I shall sing stories, tell tales. I shall entertain and bring together elf and dwarf with common purpose. Sorry, I could just see my dog through the window chewing something that she shouldn't be. I need to go okay. quickly grab right. her. Go, go. Um, actually, well, we got a second. I want to get with the... I want to get with the dwarves and see how much it would cost to take that suit of half plate we have and some of the or uh, or calcum they brought and make off set of full plate you want them to alloy steel and or calcum just to be clear so it's doable. Well, it's gonna i mean yeah. it's gonna increase the value of this thing enormously well um, and then we sell it i want them to make the rest of the plate armor and yes whatever. i understand yeah. okay and i then... just want to be clear they'll have to alloy it in with the steel like yeah. it won't just be like you have half steel and like half more calcum in this yeah, weird no, 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 like no. <laughs> they're gonna have to stretch the steel or, by... or calcum pants and <laughs> yeah um, yeah, no. yeah they can do that uh okay. i mean they have to set up a forge and smithy here mm -hmm. and all yeah. the requisite industries it's going to take a little while but when it comes to burnable trees they are in a pretty good place. Gotcha. Getting okay. a hot fire production. going is not going to be the problem. No. Okay. Uh, getting uh, getting a smithy <laughs> capable of reaching high temperatures is going to be the problem. It's going to take them some time. This being a hub for like powerful magical items could actually mm -hmm. give us the currency that we're looking for in the future if we put enough... <laughs> Time yeah, right. to it. Mm -hmm. So if you leave the half plate here, they will work on it while you're gone. And they think yes. it might be done in about 30 days. Okay. Yeah, it's I'll leave the half plate with them. It's half the time of the keep anyway. But did you want to make it magical in any way? Um, no, I'll just leave it. Leave, leave and just plate armor. Okay. I just want fancy plate armor with, with bits of auric or, or calcum inlaid in it. Some noble's gonna love that. It will take ten pounds of the one hundred of the aura calcum you have. So make sure you note that you only have ninety okay. left. 
Upgrade. Guneria, it sounds like everyone would like you to leave this Arcana check. Okay. You can do it at advantage. Can confirm. I can yes, I know, Amori. I know that that's very exciting. Advantage. Ooh, you needed that advantage for yeah. sure. Okay. 24 total. You sacrifice a legendary artifact <laughs> created in uh, truly ancient times, thousands of years old. And in the process, you fully bring the keep back online. Uh, the ability to record messages like Locke Blazewing did is back. Uh, seated in the throne. Kithrix can observe as if through a invisible arcane eye anywhere within the valley. The dry lake bed immediately mm -hmm. water begins seeping up through the water table Ooh. up into it and you watch as the water <laughs> somehow flows uphill into the moat and then hmm. back downhill again down the south way. You now have a fresh source of clean water. Excellent. Perfect. <clears throat> awesome. Does our reservoir inside the keep also fill up? It does. The giant ring also begins glowing with ominous black, purple, ultraviolet light. <clears throat> yeah. Definitely going to tell people not to go near that. Yeah. Those who approach it. The closer you get, the more they start to see, like, instead of being able to see through it, they start to see a slowly fading in purple flat plane and hear mm. whispers. I don't love that. Yeah, don't, don't go near it. I don't even want to leave it there, but I have no way of destroying it. Can I do a ritual dispel magic to power it down? Make an arcana check first to see how you would do that. You can wipe the runes here and make this gate inactive. Mm -hmm. And if you were to learn later another plane's runic signature and language, you could reattach it. Right, can, we write down, can we write down what the runes already say so that we can put them back on there if we needed to? Yes. But I you would like to know... Like three rotating rings? No, it's just one thing. <laughs> However, anyone writing the runes down, I will need a wisdom saving throw. Uh, I can do that. Okay, you work. make the notes, and then I'll work to wipe it clean. You was a five on the die. begin copying down the runes. There's something about them that draws you in. As you finish, oh, you feel pain and you see a hand in the mind's eye reaching towards you, slowly surrounding and grasping you. You're pretty sure something heard you through the gate and it knows you're here. All the more reason to shut this thing down. Okay, you cast a spell magic. The room. Reason, thank you. Okay. okay. Yeah. Did you sell your soul again? Maybe. Oh. Listen, I, I, I got an entourage now, okay? Mm. Everybody be following me. <laughs> it is now safe. We can now mill about. Perfect. And uh, we shall plant flowers. Around it. Kind of want to board around it, board it up. <laughs> just put a big old like rectangular box of wood just like on top of it. Police tape. Yeah. Just fill yeah. it with concrete. Oh. Damn. Just a giant, a giant, like shipping a, a, um, a giant picture. Yeah. What's giant. amazing is you guys keep getting box. these. You said you didn't have any magical items. You start getting magical items. Yeah, and you start covering the box. Cursed. Every single one of them is cursed. Yeah, this I just not... want a magic sword. This isn't technically cursed. The ghost not literally said it was cursed. cursed. It certainly felt cursed when it reached out to me. <laughs> All right. 
I, I think most of the logistics are handled so we can, uh, where do you want to go? <sighs> North I'm or down south? for, um, the desert, but I know everybody wasn't too keen for that. Bring extra water. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely up for for heading to the nearest trade outpost mm-hmm. and seeking so, like we need we need more trades people to to actually be yes. in our keep and doing work. Yeah, we need to get this up and running before it gets out of hand. Correct. Um, we also have what like a thousand gold a piece yeah so i mean like this is a chance for us to go in and buy some non-cursed magic items um that would be sweet yeah um before i left can we once are we in agreement that once the dwarves are finished with the armor that we're selling it or are we keeping it well i'm keeping that that's that's gonna be my armor okay (laughs) um then uh, yeah i would just ask them to Get us a few things that we need, or at least that I need. And that's it for me. Who is leading you north? Um, um I can't. I mean, it's because we're following like like damaged trails, aren't we? So, would it for, be for the first bit getting out of this valley? It will be a little rough, but then you'll reattach yourself. It's hard to say it's like a major trade road, but there is a path that is regularly taken north and south. It's just that no one maintains it, right? Like, there's no kingdom out here to pay for anything. I can lead us. I mean, I just feel like ranging is sort of what I do. It's sort of in, in the name, Ranger. Sure. Okay. I would like... But the rest make... of us can see over you, so you being in front is good. I'd like you to make a survival check after you tell me whether you want to go slow, normal, or fast. I'm thinking normal. Normal. Yeah. We got time. We got money. Um, don't use my vanish now. Nobody's gonna. I'm gonna my vanish. Gonna roll. Absolutely not. Get out of the park. Uh, you will arrive in ten days. The journey will see you face several minor encounters. Not worth talking about. You know, wolves sniffing about the edge of your camp. Uh, a brief encounter with strange travelers who might have been bandits, but, you know, it just turned out that they were just a bunch of weirdo jugglers who were acting super cagey. Uh, encounters that once may have been more interesting when you were much weaker and not as powerful, and now are based zero threat to you. It's no like Lester, so yeah, to, to nearly start a conversation about religion. Godric, <laughs> yeah, start singing a jolly tune. I'm definitely not talking about <laughs> Guineera, religion. Guineera, pick some mushrooms. <laughs> Speaking of, I am curious what your ration situation looks like. Does anyone have the ability to gather on the move through, like, um, Outlander? Dan. Yeah, I have um, Outlander. Okay, with Outlander, you don't need to worry about anything. Then. You okay. pick as you go. You arrive through the borders of the kingdom of Zenavir and make your way to its southernmost trade outpost. The walls here are very tall. Uh, The castle appears to be reinforced, and you can see that there are magical cannons pointed south. The city itself is built between a series of mountains. So it is like blocking a pass, essentially. Uh, and rather than the city being circular or or wide, it is serpentine following the pass. So it is a city built into the side of two mountains. Hmm. Um, in a way, approaching it almost feels like you're looking at a dwarven city on the surface. Um, however, the top of those walls contain not just trebuchets and catapults, but magical cannons, which are a somewhat new technology using magicules uh, that is poorly understood and very ill-tested. You've heard that, you know, there are plenty of stories that someone tests one and it just blows up on them, and it also takes out part of the castle in the process. Mm -hmm. Um, this, This trade wall, this castle wall that you're approaching is but a mere 150 feet wide, hardly the most imposing edifice, but its height is extremely imposing at over 100 feet tall. Um, 
the gate is open and trade seems to move quite briskly. The gate is huge as if to accommodate very large convoys moving both in and out. You are asked your business at the gate because they do not recognize you and you are not traveling with a wagon or any manner of that. Xenavir appears to be a kingdom of humans, orcs, and half-orcs, and a half-orcish sergeant with a squad of six humans, all of them spearmen wearing lamellard armor and, like, black iron caps. Uh, they are relaxed but alert as they move to form a half-circle around you, and the sergeant's just like, Well, welcome to the kingdom of Zenavia. Uh, this is the trade outpost of Orish Bon. Can I ask what your business is here in town? Ah, well, we, um, you know, we bring coin and we are looking to trade and um, to purchase goods, perhaps some shipments. Um, yes, so we come without goods to sell, but we come with coin to buy. Uh, you get the feeling he wants to, like, see some coin, you know? You say you have coin. It's like, he's not shaking you down, he just wants to make sure no. that you actually have money. I shake just, my pouch. Okay, yeah. Pull the coin. Does, does Kajit have whiz? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you have coin. <laughs> he... So, you said they were gnolls, right? No, you went you went north. There uh okay. the sergeant is a half orc and the rest of the people here are humans. This is a human half orc and orc kingdom. Um there are gnolls here, but they are in the trade convoys around you, both before mm. ahead and behind you. Uh goblinoids of all types and sizes. He indicates uh he like pulls out something he calls an oxtail. It's basically like like a leather impressioned sheet and he stamps something onto it and hands it to you Gwenerius since you appear to be in charge given the fact that you're the one flashing the big money uh, and he says this oxtail is good for two weeks if you need to exit out the northern end you'll be asked your business inside Zanavir if you simply come back south we'll take your oxtail from you and you can continue away uh, the caravan sarai is around the corner on the right I suggest Brekkies, and, uh, you know, welcome to Orish Bon. I hope you find what you want, and you get everything that you need and deserve. Uh, as he says that, you know, the three humans in either part of the wings of his half circle form two lines to allow you to pass between them, and they all, like, salute you as you go past. Uh, it makes you, you've seen them do it for each group that went past, but it does make you feel like, oh, we're traveling, you know, like, oh, we're being welcomed into the kingdom. What a, what a show. Um, uh, the groups that are exiting, the guards that are checking people on the way out actually do do a dance. And if you've ever seen the border crossings between, uh, India and is it Pakistan? Where they have the, 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 the like the gate the they slam closed everything. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah. two groups basically perform equivalent dance. Yes. So the groups on the way out are treated to a traditional uh Zenavier dance routine by the guards. Uh the groups on the way in are treated to respect and honors. I make note of the dance moves. <clears throat> Could come in handy. It's a lot of high kicking, spinning uh it's like a marzurka uh essentially okay as you roll into orish bon there is a caravan sarai so it's like a series of inns and trade stations some groups appear to come into the city from the south and then trade with other groups that are coming in it essentially like do business without ever actually entering the rest of the city proper um that said, uh, it is mostly like wagons, carts, and uh, other things here. A Wainwright's shop is immediate as a barracks on the other side of a long, winding, snaking road. The whole city, again, is built through a snaking road through the mountains and built into, like, carved into the mountain rather than, like, 
piled stones outside or wood construction, the mountain is simply carved into the buildings that are needed. Uh, you can see that there are people who are approaching you and are just like, guide, do you need a guide through Orish Bon? I'm quite accustomed to the local area for but a single silver piece. I can take you to where you want to go. And like someone pushes him out of the way and is like, for eight coppers, I'll get you to the best inn in town. Someone approaches and is like card tricks and is just like, ah, welcome travelers. Perhaps you'd like to see the unique magics of Orish Bon. Uh, beyond these hustlers and uh, tourist traps, you can see that there are shops that sell many things small goods oh. general stores armor smiths uh there's even some sort of like historical monument uh built into the mountain and perhaps most interestingly is that among the top layer running along the right hand side appears to be like government offices like on the <laughs> third level high Everything up there appears to be government functionaries. However, the walkway at that level is only like two people wide. So people are like running and then like running into the back of someone trying to dodge around them. Incoming traffic of someone trying to go past them. It definitely seems like the local ordinance around here may not be fully uh, competent on display. What are you looking for? The card trick person. You I want to go to the card trick person? No, no, no. I, no, you don't <laughs> want to go to the card trick person. Okay. I will. You have to let me explain. <laughs> okay. You know, talking about local um, or spawn magic, I cast dancing lights and swirled them around his head and said, that's fine, thanks. I have my own. And, then I let, <laughs> and I let the lights just kind of follow us. Okay. Amazing. <clears throat> yeah. Did you Did want to know? hire a guide? Um. Can we talk about it over break? Yeah, we can take a break. This has been the middle part. We'll be back for the final part in the final part. Stick around or don't. I'm not in charge.